How's everybody doing? Welcome to Saturday Bible Study. So we're going to continue on. Let me get my spreadsheet going. Hang on. Well, let's read it <coughs> and just see how we're going to categorize chapter 11. And he said unto me, that must prophecy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And of course, that was the angel um, talking to John. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God. So this is the same conversation, it appears. And measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. By the way, if you watch my revelation um. If you're watching this from my playlist from the beginning, also watch Revelation 1 because there's things that I'll say in one that I won't say in the other because I just won't think to. I, you know, if you were in a conversation with somebody about something very deep and then you got in that same deep conversation with somebody else, uh, a day, a week, a month, or a year later, you're not going to word everything the same. There's going to be nuggets of information, assuming these conversations involve good information. There's going to be nuggets in each that are different. So anyway, but the court which is without the temple, leave out. So this is rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. So I think this would be the church. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months. And I, I'm thinking there, that's them just telling you uh, or the Holy Spirit just telling us again that the Antichrist will reign for 42 months or 1260 days or a time times in half of a dividing time, three and a half years. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Now, the best recollection I have, or the best understanding, I should say, I have of what that is, is the church divided into two. For we are all kings and priests. And I think we read over that the other day. I believe it was in our Ephesians Bible study. For we are all kings and priests, Bible verse. First Peter 2 9, Revelation 1 6, Revelation 5 10. Okay, so it, it was in our Revelation Bible study. I knew it was something we did in the Bible study the other day. But that's the church divided into two. Sorry, getting ready for another, do another video on my other channel. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's twelve hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. Now, remember the seven candlesticks was the church divided into seven earlier in Revelation before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. If any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters 
to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Well, that's the great tribulation. All right, so I just wanted to kind of get that going or keep it updated. And um, and we finished it. Let's go to Ephesians. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what will of the Lord is, what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine. See, it's listing the same exact sins listed in the previous Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Drunkenness, adultery, fornication, wrath. I didn't put them in order. I think it begins with adultery, fornication, uh, wrath, and so on and so forth. But drunkenness is one of them, and there it is. Wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I saw the word excess in there, so that was an extremely watered down version. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms, and let's go over to, let's read it in the watered down version, and anything that's not right, we'll cover it in the King James singing songs and hymns, spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Give thanks for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church, as the church submits to Christ, as your wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife, wife actually shows love for himself. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Okay, I was just curious how the last was worded, but pretty sure that everything was done properly there. I love you very much. Ask questions.